Who if not Aries? Aries Seeker, welcome to the Existential Shift. So, so happy and grateful to have you here. Thank you for your subscription, your likes, your comments. They make my day, my week, my month, my life. Yay. Um, everything that is good is in the information box. Extended special for Valentine's that I'm doing for this February. Um, special extended for the entire 2019, Ministress of Magic. You have all the months dissected there, link below as well. Tarot Masterclass, study online tarot with moi, more gain. And to book a private reading, you can also go, you guessed correct, the information box. Instagram is also there. Now that all is said and done, welcome to your February tarot scope. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mercury. You know, in Vedic astrology, I'm an Aries Sun. I'm not surprised. I'm really, really, really not surprised. Okay, in case you're curious, this is the Afro Tarot. I always have so much energy when I do your freaking readings. You give me life, Aries, seriously. I love you guys for it, thank you. Okay, let's get to it. Do you miss me? Sorry I'm late. Fashionably late. Been busy. You understand being busy, right, Aries? You get it. Someone doesn't do something. Someone is late and they're like, oh, I've been so busy with work. You're like, okay, good. That's okay then. <laughs> Amazing. All right, Aries, for February, please. Let's see what go what's going on with my amazing Aries seekers. Did I even check the sound? It's like I checked everything except for one thing that is most important. If you can hear me properly. Let's see. Sorry, this is me doing computer stuff. Taking just a second. There it is. Hmm. Microphone array. Everything is good. Okay, great. I, ju I just wanted to make sure. Don't you hate when you shoot an entire video just to find out no one hears you? Oh, you had me at Aloha. Okay, Aries, February. Show me what my Aries seekers want me and need me to see for them. There's benevolent, clear messages for Aries. Speaking of clarity, let's get on clarity. Fogginess. Hello, Moon. Uncertainty, confusion, being stuck in a loop of thoughts that aren't even direct and clear. They're just like, it's like chasing your own tail. But here's the thing, especially in the after tarot and with the moon in general, wherever you're swimming down there in your subconscious and, and in the um, kind of drowning in your insides, it's yours. That's your swamp. Welcome to your gut. If you don't like what you're seeing there, maybe it's time for a cleanup. Don't suppress Aries. That's how disease occur. You suppress, it festers because energy does not go away by being denied or ignored. Doesn't matter how it's uncomfortable. Doesn't matter how much you don't want to touch the thing. You have to touch the thing. The moon is like, sorry, I'm taking control. You know, it always amazes me. People are like, oh, I don't believe that the planets can have any effect on us. <clears throat> Excuse me. The moon shifts, raises, drops, oceans, tides, water. 
you are made of 70 something percent water. I'm sorry, are you stronger than the ocean? Are you exempt from the strength of the moon and from other planets? It's science. Check. Yes, I'm taking the science of, you know, ecology and impl implying it on astrology, but it, it, it everything is connected. Okay? If, if a moon can freaking affect the ocean, it can affect you. You're not stronger than the ocean. I know you're fantastic. I know you're powerful. You are all bad jazz Aries. You're not stronger than the ocean, okay? So the moon is talking to you. It's talking to your inside. It's deep, 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 deep inside of you. And it wants this person, event, situation, could be multiple things, to rise up into the surface. It wants to talk about it. It wants you to talk about it. The little shadows in you that you were hiding, they want to talk about it. You want to talk about it. You're just scared. Have that conversation. Clear the fog by addressing things to yourself and to the people involved. There are a lot of emotions stirring inside of you, Aries, and they demand an outlet. That which scares you is you. The things that you see that frightens, that frightens you, it's your own shadow that you've suppressed. And that shadow is not evil, it's not bad, it's not dangerous, it's just an unknown. Or maybe things that in the past you've been battered and bruised and judged for. But guess what? You've grown out of it. There's a story about you know how they tie a baby they would tie a baby elephant his leg to a wooden pole that is you know stuck on the ground and the baby elephant will try to escape but it can't because his leg is tied to it and then the baby elephant that's how he stays you know circuses and things like that it stays grows into an adult elephant way more you know, way bigger, stronger, powerful, still tied up to the same freaking pole. For the baby elephant, the pole was this side. For the huge elephant, the grown-up, the pole is now relatively this size. All the elephant has to do is to pull, and that wooden thing will just snap out because the elephant is so much stronger. But in his mind, this is still the thing that holds him. And it's still impossible. It was impossible. You are so much stronger and capable today. That huge mountain that seemed impossible that was holding you back once, now it's just a little twig. It's psychological. The moon is the card of deep psychology. Yes, esoteric knowledge, of course, but everything is hiding over here. I mean, what do we know about 10% of our brain? It's about 90%. Please don't hold me for accountable for the actual numbers. I'm saying so and so, I'm not exactly certain, but there's a major difference between what we know about the human mind and what we have no fucking clue about. There is so much in there inside your brain that is so capable and powerful. Just reach into it. Pull that goddamn twig. It's no longer a log. Break it. Break the ties. Break the fear. Talk to the moon. Talk to yourself. Talk to the person. Talk to your inner child. Talk to your parents. The moon can be a mother. There's something that you're worried about. You're deeply, deeply, deeply worried and fear and 
are scared of. And it's only what you make of it, Aries. Yes, the moon exists, but right around the corner, there's the sun. And how does the sun appear? What is the sun? The sun, the sun is consciousness. The sun is awareness. The sun is light. The sun is truth. If you want to cast the shadows away, flashlight them. Speak. Talk. Say. Express. Address. Bring up, up to the surface. And then see how naturally and easily the shadows just kind of fade away. It's too bright. You're bright. Once you speak, everything will be bright. Have you tried? You're a very brave animal, Ram. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. The greatest fear is fear itself. <sighs> mm, it sits on your chest and on your heart. But I feel like it's coming from a very, this is all channel, I feel like it's coming from a very sweet, caring place. This is not something selfish. You're, you're anxious about something. Don't hold it in, Aries. Give people around you more credit. Give them an opportunity to show you what they can do. You'll be surprised once you just take a little step, small leap of faith, one step at a time. You'll be amazed. Try. Let's keep going. All that from one card. <laughs> Comment below. Let me know. That you love me. Let me know that you love me. Let me know that you love me. You know, it connects vicariously. It doesn't necessarily has to logically connect to the reading. And yet I feel, you know, the whole let me know that you love me thing. What I'm about to say, it's not just a metaphor, it's not a cliche, it's not just philosophical, theoretical, it's damn real, as real as it can be. We do not know what tomorrow brings with all the respect for the tarot. They help us create tomorrow, they help us tap into our inner core and to our higher self to understand what is the math of the route that we have established for ourselves and yes, we can see relatively the tomorrow but we still have to brick by brick create and build it right and there are forces way stronger than us and we don't know everything that lies ahead we don't know what tomorrow brings not uncertainty and if you love someone if you feel something tomorrow they might not be around you might not be around. Regret is the worst thing to live with. Speak your heart. Hiding love, I find it to be a spiritual sin. It's the purest thing that exists. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Eight of Swords. Release the shackles of your brain. This is being stuck in your in, in your mind, especially with the moon. A lot of fear, and the moon is 18, and this is 8. 188. Eight. It's being in a loop, a constant loop of... You have to break through it. You have to cut the ties of the loop, of the fear, of the anxiety, of the overthinking, of, of trying to 
compartmentalize and analyze and sort things in your mind. The subconscious, the heart, it's not how they operate. They operate on an amorphic, esoteric um, state of existence. It breaks through the 3D, it breaks through the mechanism. Love is uncontrollable. It's the only human force that we cannot manipulate, distort, or force. We can deny, we can hide, we can suppress for as long as we, as long as, you know, our subjective self can handle, but not forever. It will fester and will, and then eventually it will come out one way or another. There are powers that are beyond your control, that are beyond your understanding, in which you just have to flow. The waters, the moon, the ocean. You have to let go and hope the tides will get you to safety. If you fight it, you will only drown. So if you fight it, if you fight the currents, if you fight the ocean, if you fight your heart, if you fight your emotions, you will surely fail, drown. But if you let go and release and allow and let it be, there's a very good chance that life will bring you to shore. <laughs> Everything around us has a shape to it, right? I'm sorry, I'm staring outside the window and I, and I have a view of all kinds of things, shapes. Love doesn't have a shape. It's amorphic. Break through the infinity loop of trying to put the square in a triangle and a triangle in a circle and a circle in an eight. A circle in a seven. Don't try to force anything. Don't try to force yourself. Don't try to fight yourself. You're only fighting your soul. Watch Cancer. Yeah, and the moon. Yeah, watch, watch the Cancer video that I uploaded yesterday. Also, you see the lady over here in the moon card, and you see the lady over here. Red cape, red cape. Someone is entangled in their own fears, in their own mind, and someone wants to help. This could be you helping yourself. This could be you helping another. This could be someone helping you. This could be mutual help, as it always is. When, this, when she will approach the waters, what will she see? She will see herself. We see ourself reflecting at each other's eyes. We learn about ourselves from our interactions and encounters and conversations. And how our hearts echo towards each other. We, ban we bounce off of each other, right? That's the force of nature. Everything bounces back off of its reflection in someone's eyes, in the waters. It all keeps looping back to you needing to release, to allow, to express. Twenty minutes in, nineteen minutes, and we had the moon and the eight of swords. God, I love to hear my, myself talk. <laughs> Hope you guys too. Okay, let's keep going. That was good though. That was important. I like it. I like this reading. Whew. The moon and eight of swords. Let's keep going for February for Aries, please. Nine of wands. What are you guarding yourself from? I feel like some of you are really guarded and holding back and 
there's a sense of paranoia and fear and self-restraining, not knowing who you can trust, if you can trust, you won't know if you won't try. Like that's seriously, that's that that's how trust works. I mean, trust is earned, not demanded, so you expect people to earn your trust. Okay, but it feels like you're really taking it like a trillion gazillion too much. Like at one point, th there is no certainty, okay? People can, you know, prove themselves worthy and people can fail, but you won't know until you give them the opportunity to either succeed or fail. Not with cognitive theoretical tests, but an experience. Try something and then see. And if you're scared of getting hurt or to hurt or whatever this all moon, eight of swords, nine of wands, fear, paranoia here, I feel so much anxiety just by looking at the cards and by tapping into your energy. If something will fail, if someone will hurt, if someone will get hurt, I'm not saying it's fun or that it's okay, but it is an essential part of living. It's unavoidable. And the door to success and the door to failure is the same door. So if you close the door on potential failure, you automatically close the door for potential success. If you close the door for getting hurt, you automatically close the door for feeling happy. Feeling happy, not thinking happy, feeling happy. You know the difference. Thinking happy is making sure your circumstances and your environment is positive and successful. Reasons to be happy. Being happy, feeling happy is where it's not circumstantial, it's, it's emotional based, right? It's, it's sen sensory based. And it requires risks. So the circumstances, the thinking happy isn't happy because you just took a risk, right? And this and that and that can fail. But the sen sensory happy, the potential of actually being happy is ecstatic because, oh my God, this could actually work. And if it actually works, then it actually experiences it. And then the mind falls like, oh, okay, it worked. Okay. And then if it doesn't, the mind will just kick in and fix it and move to the next, okay? But it will still be okay. I see an Aries that is on survival mode, constantly trying to avoid the tides, the highs and the lows. That's a very um, sad way to live. And also I have another loop here because the moon is 18, so it's nine, and then eight of swords, eight, and then nine of wands, nine, eight, nine. Was, yeah, nine, eight, nine. It's like one step forward, one step backwards to the loop. One step a little forward, and one step backwards to be in the loop, like the safe zone, right? And the nine, it's the um, finale, it's the completion, it's the um, finishing the lesson, it's the graduation. And it's like you're almost always graduating and then you, oh no, because what's on the other side of graduation, right? The unknown. The unknown is scary. The unknown is confusing. But just because there's fog doesn't mean that the road is not clear. I drove so much in the past month and there was a couple of days where I drove all day long um, a couple of months ago. And it was in a weather that was extremely foggy. I was on a highway. It was nothing but fog. I couldn't see beyond my nose. But I had no choice but to keep going. There were cars behind me. There were cars in front of me. So I just, you know, I, I drove with the, a little below the speed limit. I was focused. I 
did everything I could have done to the best of my abilities. And then I was like, okay, it will either be okay or not. But that doesn't change the fact that I have to keep driving. I have to keep moving. Okay, sarah, sarah. I can only do the best that I can throughout the experience. Not the best that I can avoidance. AKA avoidance meaning being on the side of the road forever. Yeah, for a little bit, it gets too much for an hour. But if I know that in the next week or so, it's going to be completely foggy, so I don't have a choice, then I just have to drive. You just have to do. You just have to take that step and move forward. You will never reach a satisfactory state of mind where, oh, now it's safe. Nothing is ever completely safe. Even when we put on our seat belts and put on our helmets, yeah, you can embedder the odds, but nothing is ever completely safe. Instead of focusing on what can go wrong, Aries, focus on what can go great. The glass half full, right? You're a great motivator. I, I know so many Aries that are such great motivators. Can you take your own advice? Motivate yourself on matters of the heart. Because I want you to live. Aries, I want you to live and I want you to love. And I want you to be loved. Oh my God, Aries. I so want you to be loved. But something there is sitting there when it comes to the notion of love and how it has made you feel in the past that it just won't let go of you. You have to let go of it. Another loop, two of pentacles, more thinking, more dilemmas. Look at him. Everyone is like towards the boat, from the boat, the waves are waving and he's like standing on one leg. Should I stay or should I go? Yes or no? You know what's beyond the two of pentacles once you choose a fucking coin? The three of pentacles, establishing success. But you have to take a leap. You have to take that step. Look, the leg is up. Okay, so we made progress. From being stuck in a loop, we're going into almost decision-making. Two of pentacles. But Want to hear something fun? This is another eight, by the way. I'm taking it as another eight because of the infinity symbols. symbol. Fun thing about making a choice. Let's say you're at a crossroad. You need to choose which path you walk. And you're like, okay, that one. And you're not sure. Or you're, you have to take a step. You can't just sit on the side of the road watching people walk by, making choices, going here, going there. And you're like, forever. So you take it, you make a choice, you walk the path. And then you discover that it's wonderful and great. And you keep walking that path, yay. Or you're like, eh, I don't like it. This is not good. This is not working for me. Uh, Make a U-turn or make a different turn and then you know that road is not for me or that road is for me by trial and error. You go on that boat, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. And you know what I like about this? The ocean was stirring inside of you. You were stuck inside your head but now at least you're observing it, watching it, looking at it from outside. Be like, should I step inside or should I not? At least you're aware it's there. Before that, it was in denial. You were like, I don't want to touch it. I'm just going to think about it. But here you're starting to like, your, your body's lead is towards the waters. You see the waves. You understand that people are walking from and to. You get it, okay? Maybe you're thinking, how should I go about it? How exactly should I step? What kind of shoes should I wear while I'm walking towards the waters? But either way, I feel like you're considering stepping into the waters. Good. Now let's see you actually do it. Let's keep going for Aries. Thank you. Okay. Forming a plan. A start. A modest start. There's one coin at hand right now as opposed to two coins. 
choosing a route and doing the things, doing the actions, good. This could be you stepping out of the loop and deciding on, I don't know, a specific job, a specific relationship, a specific place of being, a specific school, a specific anything. And it's a modest start. The pages are a beginning, okay? They're messengers of a potential future. But the potential future won't occur unless the step is made. And this month I see you getting there. And this is another nine, because Page of Pentacles is um, can be Virgo energy, which is September, which is nine. Virgo and Pisces here, the moon is Pisces. So it's funny, the moon is Pisces or Cancer. My rising is Cancer. But um, in Vedic astrology, I just discovered I have a lot of Pisces in my chart. Even in, in Tropic, like my, my uh, Midheaven is in Pisces. But And I always so relate to Virgo. Like I resonate with the energy of Virgo. So many times I feel like a Virgo. I understand Virgos all the jazz of Virgos, and I recently discovered that in Vedic astrology, my moon is in Virgo. Vedic is our soul, it's our ancient soul. I feel like the difference between um, Western tropical astrology and Eastern Vedic astrology, Vedic astrology has just been around thousands of years, it's more ancient. I feel like it connects to the, our really, really past lifetimes, to like the origin of our soul walking this planet. And the tropical Western astrology is more like the modern aspects of our soul walk on this planet, like our newest incarnations, including this one. So even if your Vedic chart is really different than your tropical chart, maybe you've grown or evolved or changed from that from those lifetimes to now. But I relate to both. The ancient, ancient aspects of my soul really connect with my Vedic chart and recent modern aspects of my soul really connect with tropical chart. It's kind of cool. That's It's just how I see it. Let me know if you have a source that says something similar. I'd love to read about it. That's my intuitive connection, but if it exists somewhere in writing, I would love to know. So, Sorry. Small detour. Let's continue. Aries, February. What comes with the Page of Pentacles? What is the dilemma, then decision, then action that is being made, offered to you or by you? 999. Okay. Hmm. Six of Swords in the reverse. I kind of like it. Why do I like it? Six of Swords in its upright, it's very temporary. It's temporary things. It's being in a state of mind of, um, of kind of detachment, of kind of either taking a vacation or, or vacating your mind. It's, like, it's kind of being, being away. And sometimes we get addicted to it. We want to stay in the detached kind of state of mind because it's convenient and easy. But at one point we need to get back to life. And I feel like the Six of Swords in reverse for you, it's like... Okay, I'm done carrying all these swords. I'm done having to be in mental breaks constantly. When we learn how to, instead of going full force, full speed, and then to zero, you know, like zero to 100, 100 to zero, you wouldn't do that to your car. What, why would you do that to yourself? And we learn instead to gradually grow with our energy and gradually relief with our energy, aka not do too much at once and then having to just sleep for three days, as opposed to just, you know, dividing your time better, more, you know, in a more linear, leisure kind of way, then instead of having to constantly take breaks, your state of mind will be in a constant state of some, a little bit of rest, a little bit of action, as opposed to 100% action, 100% in action. You'll be like constantly 50% this, 50% that. You'll learn how to um, 
temp to temper. You learn how to temper. There is this reading. If you're here for love, this is relevant, but it's also relevant for other many things. It's your psyche um, and just way of life. But if you want to focus on love, I'm doing a Valentine's February special extended. So we'll link to that below. Just so you know, we'll talk about it and get extended. If it comes up here, I'll talk about it here. Although I feel like this could very much be relevant for love. Sometimes we're afraid to take a risk. Queen of Wands in the reverse. Hmm. If there is someone in your life that, oh, this might connect to the moon and the Eight of Swords and the sense of paranoia. Okay, if this is coming from someone that you either was or still in your life that has created a lot of anxiety and was very controlling and obsessive and jealous and insecure and um, constantly in your face. Because the Queen of Wands and it's upright, she's fantastic and fun. The Queen of Wands in the reverse, she's just impossible. Now this could be a male or a female, right? But because it's a queen, I'm going to refer to her as a she. If there was a female, again, if you're a woman, this could be a man. This could be a fire sign, perhaps. If there was someone that constantly scorned you, right? The element of fire in the reverse. This might be you with the Six of Swords stepping away from this individual, saying enough is enough. And this could just be, and this is another eight, what marks for me to know what happened that made you stuck in the sloop of the moon, Eight of Swords, Nine of Pentacles. Someone may have traumatized you. Because the Queen of Wands can be Leo, could be Sun, it's very much the Sun. And I have the Moon here and it's upright and the Sun in the reverse. So there's a lot of confusion and awareness and clarity of mind are in the reverse, right? So the way to bring back this to this, to the, for the feminine, instead of being in the reverse, to be in her upright, is to strengthen the element of the Sun, of the awareness, of the truth, of the communication, of the fun, of the energy of life, to cast away the shadows, like I said before. Six of Swords, Queen of Wands, and Reverse. Mm. If you are in a bad relationship that is constantly on and off, in and out, with a lot of drama, and a lot of jealousy, and a lot of spitefulness, and a lot of um, negativity, and pettiness, and control issues that's the thing that constantly is keeping you in this very paranoid fearful state of mind because everyone will do the same to you and you have to let that shit go whatever makes you feel like that if it's yourself and your own fears in your past let those go if there's someone in your life doing that to you or maybe you're doing that to them Maybe you are inconsistent and off, you know? This is the fire element. This could be you, Aries, Queen of Wands in the reverse. This could be you doing this. When the ego overcomes you, when the ego is stronger than your heart, because this, when she's in her upright, Queen of Wands is heart-based. 
And she's in the reverse, she's ego-based. You want to turn this back around? Be heart-based, not ego. Next card is a fell. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, great, 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 great. Ace of Wands, the world, Nine of Pentacles. Good. We love this. Now let's look at the cards. And of course, another nine. So, this is murky <laughs> and not a lot of fun, but once you take that little step, see from what, juggling two pentacles, two birds on a tree, take one to your hand and it grows from one coin to nine. Because you let that shit go. If it's your ego, you let that go, right? If it's temporar temporary and lack of ability to make a choice and constantly being in, in a way state, temporary, temporary state, inactive state, this is very in inactive energy, then this is turn around. And what we have, oh, I'm sorry, it was like here. The Ace of Wands dropped first. You're taking that wand, you let go of all the rest, of all the semantic, you focus on the essence, on the fire, on the energy of it, and you breathe new life into it and something new is born. The thing in you that it was in the reverse, that got reversed, would following your instincts and following your gut, and this is Ace of Wands is a very active force. It's cardinal fire, you, Aries. It leads, it's the fire that leads, that gives the, the initiation, the spark of, initiate, of initiation, of life, of something, of, of our creativity, of, um, of love, of, of anything. And once you do that, once you step away from all that murkiness by just grabbing that wand and be like, back to life, Back to living. Look at what happens. The best aspect of the nine, other than the nine of cups, nine of pentacles, and the world. This is a global success. If this is about work, this could be a project or something that you've worked for a really long time, that you've invested a lot of energy and time into it, and now is really kind of becoming global. This could be travel. This could be a very, very um, beautiful, independent, feminine, successful self. Um, this is self-employed, yes, but this is just, just this is just independent. What's the word that I'm looking for? Self-sustainable, self-sustained. This is money, and this is recognition. And it feels like it comes out of the blue, like as a sudden burst of opportunity and results, but it's actually something that Nine of Pentacles is after the Eight of Pentacles, a lot of hard work and investments. And the world is a completion. It's the last card in the tarot, in the tarot deck. You've learned all the lessons. You took the leap. You pushed through the nine. You're on the other side, and guess what it is? Not scary emptiness, but an entire universe, the world. Fantastic. Now let's look at the beginning aspect of your extended. This is this is amazing. I'm really happy to see this. Really, really happy to see this. Okay. First part of your extended. Let's take all the nines. This is the uh, the numerology that I do for the beginning of it. And then majors. This is one eight six. Oh, bottom of the deck. Wait, I'm gonna take this. This, these are the cards that I had on the table, right? Bottom of the deck. 
three of pentacles. From the two of pentacles, when you choose something properly and you work on it, three of pentacles. If you were dabbling with traveling, not sure when, where, um, towards either the end of February, February or March is probably where I see travel. So we will start the extended with talking about these two majors and then the three nines. And then we'll go to a Celtic cross for love, just focus on the new shuffle, 10 cards just for love. And then right now I'm going to give you a message from the runes, one rune, and then in the extended we will have three runes. Okay? All right. One rune, please, for Aries for February. A rune for Aries for February. Room for collective of Aries, my Aries seeker. What do they need to know? What, will, what energy will be around them in February? Raido. Okay, some of you are literally traveling in February. Probably towards the end of February, because I saw it in the third, in the last tri uh, trimester, last third of the month. Rido can be the letter R. This could be travel for business. But this is, could be just like a lot of um, business opportunities, communication, signing leases, um, pushing towards, pushing through more projects, finishing a project successfully, starting a new endeavor, financial profit. This is a time to communicate, to be active, and to move forward. And you love to hear this, Aries, right? The astrology says that at one point you'll have to chill. All of you individually listen to your own instincts. Your chart is complex, your decision making is complex. See what vibes with you. Okay? And when you communicate your fears and your um, your issues, do it with patience and with ease and with an open heart and an open mind to understandings. Okay? And I know sometimes you're afraid to express yourself because you can, you know, once you go into that Aries mode, you can be like, you're, you're scared to express anger or be too much. You can do it. You can express yourself without being aggressive. Stop letting people tell you that you can't do something just because that's the dictionary definition of what an Aries is. Come on. Yes, there's the shadow aspect of an Aries, but there's the shadow aspect of all Zodiac. Overcome it. Make it work, you know? Okay, guys, this was a long reading. I'll see you soon in the extended. If not, regardless, I'll see you in March. I really, really recommend to watch other placements for a wholesome um, picture. And I also recommend to watch past month reading, like January, and make the, make the connections from a futuristic point of view after experiencing the energies and everything. Um, all fun stuff in the information box, you know. Thank you for your subscriptions. If you haven't subscribed yet so far, this is your opportunity now. Um, love and joy. See you in a sec in your extended. Mwah.